Hey Facebook, uh, I just want to thank you all for joining me yet again for another great week. On Monday nights, as you know, we do Infidelity Recovery, How to Heal from the Pain of an Affair. There are so many of you right now who have experienced this in your particular relationship or you know someone who has. And so we provide this service free for you every single week just to give you something to help you heal, something that will help you get over the situation that you're currently in so that you can begin to move forward. As we're entering into the holiday season, it seems as though this is when couples truly experience a level of crisis that they generally don't have throughout the course of the, the rest of the year. In fact, we know that December and January have always been known as divorce months. And so we here at Couples Academy, we're committed to doing whatever we can to prevent divorce. As you know, uh, we are a relationship-based company that's committed to helping couples by placing them on the path to fulfillment. So before we get into tonight's topic, I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items. Number one, there's so many of you, over 200 of you, who've actually uh, pre-ordered the book, The Audacity of Marriage. I want to let you know that we actually got the shipment in uh, just a few days ago. So this week, it will be going out uh, to all of those who have purchased. For those of you who have not, you can certainly go to our website at www.theaudacityofmarriage.com and you can purchase your copy today. Whether it's a paperback or a Kindle, it is available for you. Also, feel free to go to your app store. Whether you have an Android or an iPhone, you can download the Couples Academy app today. That way you get access to our podcasts and our videos and all of our great content to really empower your relationship. For those of you who have questions, feel free to inbox me directly through the Facebook group uh, or my personal Facebook page, or you can simply email me at info at couplesacademy.org. All right, let's get into tonight's topic. Tonight we're talking about, and I'm constantly going to be looking to my right as I look at my notes on the screen, but we're talking about the three things that your marriage must have or the affair will. Once again, the three things your marriage must have or your affair will. What I, I want to start off by saying is this. There is a major difference between your, your marriage and your relationship. Your relationship speaks to uh, your communication, your ability to, inter to effectively communicate, meeting each other's emotional needs, sexual fulfillment, the blending of your personalities. It's a heartfelt connection. Whereas your marriage speaks to duties, responsibilities, obligations, financial planning, money management, how we raise the kids, what the future looks like. So it's more task specific. And what we have found is that most people transition from a relationship into a marriage. That in essence, once they say I do, they give up their relationship for the sake of the marriage. So when they were dating or in their committed courtship, their primary focus was each other. But once they got married, work became the primary focus. Ministry became the primary focus. Children became the primary focus. And when that became the focus, the relationship wound up being the last thing on the totem pole. And so what happens is, if that happens, there's all of this emotional disconnect, and we, we don't know each other, we don't spend as much time together the way we did, and so all of a sudden, that's when the enemy can come in, and the temptations and the vulnerability of connecting emotionally with someone else can occur. And what we have found is that these three ingredients that we're going to go over once existed in your relationship, but at some point throughout the transition of your marriage, it began to fade away. And these three items are the things that exist in the majority of affairs uh, that exist. If it's an emotional affair and strictly emotional, it doesn't have these components, but anything short of an emotional affair will have these three components. <clears throat> so number one is what we call the childhood magic. When you were a child, you had no responsibilities, you had no obligations, you were free to do whatever you want, you could play, you could have a good time, you were excited, you just enjoyed yourself. You weren't burdened with the responsibilities of life. And oftentimes, in marriage, you're consumed with so many responsibilities. So an affair provides an atmosphere where, listen, we're not co-laborers together. We're not partnering on anything together. We're not responsible for bills. We're not raising children. All we have is us. So we can have fun. 
We can enjoy ourselves. We can have a new lease on life. We can have that childish freedom that we once experienced when we were dating our particular spouse. And so what happens is, this begins to develop because it no longer exists in the relationship. So the key is really learning how to begin to have fun together with your partner. It is so interesting how so many spouses that I meet will tell me that they love their spouse, but they just don't like them. You know, I love them and I have a care for her, but I just don't like who she is. I just don't like who he is. And based upon that, we can't connect. So it is so easy to find someone else that you can connect with. So the childhood magic that you once had, you need to reintroduce back into your relationship by taking the time to learn your partner all over again and to incorporate fun moments that you can experience and express with your partner. Number two, you need to have what is called adole <coughs> excuse me, adolescent sexuality. Now, understand, I'm not suggesting or condoning adolescents having sex. That's not what I'm suggesting. There are many of you who did the right thing. You were integral and waited till you got married uh, before you had sex. There were some of you who hadn't. But the one thing that's particularly interesting about adolescent sexuality, it's unplanned, it's passionate, it's exciting, uh, it's, it's, it's spur of the moment, uh, there's creativity, there's fun, there's newness, there's joy. And what happens is when you get in a marriage and you've been married for quite some time, boredom sets in. In fact, we've been told, telling you that monogamy oftentimes leads to monotony. And what we have found is that when the sex is highly impacted in a negative way within the marriage, all of a sudden it creates a vulnerability for someone to slip in from outside that marriage. And so we have found that there are certain marital sexual patterns that exist in marriages that are in trouble. And you may find yourself in one of these sexual marital patterns. These are the three negative. There are five, but we're just gonna cover three for the purpose of this particular session. Now, this is about to get interesting, so I would highly encourage every single one of you who are watching right now to share this on your page. Share this in a group because it's about to get interesting. Sexual pattern number one is what we would call <clears throat> uh, duty sex. Now, if you know anything about duty sex, it's that sex that I'm forced to do because I'm in this marriage and that's my obligation, that's my duty, that's my responsibility. I don't typically like it, I don't get any delight out of it, it is just a duty. And what happens is, it is not just miserable for the one who doesn't want to do it, it's also miserable for the one who wants to engage in sexual intimacy with their partner. And I will tell you why. <clears throat> if I don't like you and we are not in a good space and we're engaging in sex and it is a duty for me, the touch that once would stimulate is now the touch that begins to repel. And guess what? It was T.D. Jakes who said sexuality without intimacy feels like rape. And oftentimes the one, typically women in this case, and, and there, there have been men as well, but generally it's the woman who's participating in duty sex. They feel no emotional connection. And for women, it's very emotional. That in essence, if you touch a woman anywhere on her body, that sensation travels up to her emotional headquarters. And the first thing she's thinking about is, how did you make me feel? And what did you say to me? And were you nice to me? And she's thinking about the fight they had two days ago. And if you don't pass the check or the test, uh, she's not stimulated. But if you were nice, if you were courteous, if you participated in uh, what we call emotional foreplay, and she feels safe and protected and good, then that sensation goes back to her body and she's ready. And so what we have found is that so many women, generally speaking, are not happy in their relationship and they're participating in what we call duty sex. But just as miserable as it may be for that wife, it is equally miserable for the husband. Because one thing about men, men have a need to feel needed. Men desire to be desired. And so when they're in a relationship long term with one person, they wanna know that they still have it. They wanna know that they're still loved and admired and desired. And when, that, when they're not getting that energy or that confirmation or affirmation from their partner, all of a sudden it presents a problem. And so I have heard so many men who have said, when they've engaged in sex, duty sex with their spouse, it was like having sex with a bump on a log. There was no energy, there was no life, there was no passion, there was no nothing. And 
not to get too graphic, but some men have even said that they rather masturbate than have sex with a spouse who is unwilling and doing it out of obligation. So duty sex is one of the negative sexual patterns that many couples can fall into. The second negative sexual pattern uh, is what we will call old shoe sex. Now, what does that mean? Now, I'm going to rhetorically ask a question to all of the women who are watching right now. How many pairs of shoes do you actually have in your closet? Do you have more than 10 pairs of shoes? If you do, just click the like button so I can see you. Do you have more than 15 pairs of shoes in your closet? How about 20? How about 30? How about 50? <laughs> There's some women who have 50 and beyond, up to 100 pairs of shoes in their closet. But what would happen if you were forced to wear the same pair of shoes with every single outfit all throughout the year. So let's just say you have a pair of flip-flops that you would normally take to the beach, but now you have to wear it to church, you're wearing them to work, you're wearing them to that formal event with that beautiful dress, you're wearing them out on dates, you're wearing them in the winter time with snow, you're wearing them everywhere, you're forced to wear one pair of shoes. You would be miserable frustrated, some of you would probably want to commit suicide if you were forced to wear one pair of shoes because there's so much variety in your shoe selection. You're matching it with pocketbooks and belts and, and your outfits and your makeup. And so there's a lot of effort that goes into the variety. Well, oftentimes sex can be like one pair of shoes. Old shoe sex is the same way. It's uh, <clears throat> predictable, it's in the same place, we're doing the same thing, it's boring. There's no excitement, there's no creativity, there's no fun, there's no newness. And when you slip into that negative sexual pattern, it can create a vulnerability for those that have a desire for it, and then an affair can ultimately occur because in an affair, because you're tricked by this whole feeling of newness, there's excitement and creativity and things that you typically would not do in the confines of your marriage. In fact, there is a major difference between what we would call married sex and affair sex. Because affair sex, there's a naughtiness to it. There's a secrecy to it. There's something like, you know what, we don't have but 15 minutes. What are we going to quickly do before we get back to where we need to be? And so there's the threat of being discovered, but there's a level of excitement even in that expression. And so sometimes we can get swept away in that feeling, not realizing that it's not sustainable. And so that is the trick that keeps us in situations that we need not be in. And so the third sexual matter or pattern, if you're enjoying this, please share this with somebody you know, because I'm sure somebody can benefit from this right now. The third sexual matter or pattern is what we will call the sexless marriage. <clears throat> now, by definition, a sexless marriage can imply a few things. Generally speaking, a sexless marriage is a couple who has sex 10 times a year to once a month. And in some cases, no sex at all. I've counseled couples who literally have not been intimate in literally over a year. Nothing physically wrong, nothing biologically, <coughs> biologically wrong, but it speaks to the pain, it speaks to the emotions, and it speaks to the negative relational patterns that exist within their marriage. And when you don't love your partner and not feeling good about your partner and constantly in conflict with your partner, the first thing that is affected is your sexuality. And I'm gonna tell you something, when set, not that sex is everything, it is not, but it is certainly important. So when you're dealing with the foundational principles of what makes a healthy, successful, mutually beneficial marriage, sex is high up on that priority list. And so if you find yourself in one, in one of those negative sexual patterns, there's a possibility that that could be the reason why an affair has occurred. Excuse me one second. So number one, we talked about childhood magic. Number two, we talked about adolescent sexuality. The third ingredient or component that your marriage must have, and if it doesn't, the affair will, is what we would call adult mobility. Now, adult mobility is this. Once you've turned 16 in some states, 
18 and others and beyond, you got your license. And now you've got your car and you're free to go wherever you want. And the one thing about an affair, you're dealing with two consensual partners who have access to transportation. They're able to be mobile. And so because of that, they can get away for a weekend. They can sneak and play hooky during the day and connect. You know, it's so interesting when you're in an affair, if you had an hour and a half lunch break, and that your affair partner lived 30 minutes across town, you would make a 30 minute drive just to spend 30 minutes with them and take a journey 30 minutes back just in time to get back for work. But let it be your spouse and you've got a two hour break and they wanna see you for 10 minutes. We can come up with every excuse, every reason, every justification as to why we're busy, how it can happen, and we'll deal with it later. And then oftentimes later never comes. So this adult mobility gives people the freedom to be able to do what they couldn't do if they didn't have transportation. Now, even though married couples have adult mobility, they don't take advantage of it the way that an affair partner uh, does. Now, I want you to understand something. I want you to hear the titles of these three ingredients. Number one, we said childhood magic. Number two, adolescent what? Adolescent, um, let me go back up to the list. Adolescent sexuality. And number three, uh, adult mobility. All of those three things speak to age, a child, an adolescent, an adult. Now, this is deep. All of us have a biological age. You may be 30. You may be 45. You may be 60. But even though biologically we can all identify with a specific age, we all have what is called an internal age. And oftentimes when we're in an affair relationship and it's new and it's exciting, it's speaking to the childhood in us. It's speaking to the youthfulness in us. Because guess what? A marriage that's full of responsibilities and obligations, it ages you. It matures you. But when you're void of those things, you are able to tap into the child within you. And so that is why it's so critically important that as a couple, you begin to focus on your relationship because it is the relationship aspect of your union that keeps you young, that keeps you vibrant, that keeps you excited. And when you're beginning to do this regularly, all of a sudden, the three components that typically would exist in an affair exist within your marriage. So in essence, you're protecting your marriage from the possibility of an affair. So what we're seeing is that in many cases, people don't have a willful, uh, evil, wicked desire to destroy their relationships. But if their relationship is vulnerable because it's missing certain components that are important for a healthy relationship, for some, it creates a weakness and a vulnerability. Now, there's never any justification. There's never any good reason why someone does what they do. But understanding the why of the affair and how it occurs allows you to build up the proper foundation to keep it from happening, or if it has happened, knowing what to do to repair that particular relationship, to bring that relationship back into a protected covenant union. These are some of the things that we've got to be mindful of. And these are some of the things I want you to begin to implement in your marriage. Now, here we are in the month of December. It is the time to celebrate. It is the time to vacation. It is a time of travel. There's an opportunity for romance and expressing your love. And during this particular month, I want you to take advantage of the season that you're in because it can represent a level of newness in your marriage that you haven't had before. So hopefully you've learned the three components that must be in your marriage for if it is not, it is possible that they will exist in your affair. Listen, for all of those who have questions, feel free to inbox me. Uh, the inbox has been blowing up. So many people looking for help. So many people struggling with this particular situation. We here at Couples Academy are here for you to give you what you need. So we thank you for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you on next Monday. If there are particular topics that you would like for us to discuss, feel free to let me know. But once again, if you haven't gotten the book, The Audacity of Marriage, you can go to theaudacityofmarriage.com, order your copy today, download the app, the Couples Academy app. It is available for you. <coughs>
<coughs> you can tune into our podcast, um, our videos. We have over three to 400 videos on YouTube alone. We would love for you to be a part of that experience. Um, and guess what? Coming uh, next year in January, we're actually going to be creating a huge uh, reading and discussion group for the book. So whether you have the book or not, you can participate in the conversation and get the knowledge that will help you enhance your particular relationship. Love you all. See you next week.